Hello chess lovers, Soren here and in this video I want to share with you the first game of 2010 World Chess Championship match which was played between the World Chess Champion Indian Chess Grandmaster Vishwanathan Anand and the challenger Bulgarian Chess Grandmaster Veselin Topalov. In his team Anand had Ganguly, Nielsen, Kasimjanov and Wojtasek and also Anand was getting help from Karl Sengiri and Kasparov as blitz and sparring partners. Needless to say that their team was heavily computer dependent. On the other hand, Topolov's team consisted of Cheparinov, Leami, Smith and Dufek. But the news which made Anand's team too worry was that a powerful supercomputer was loaned to Topolov's team by Bulgaria's defense department. That was supercomputer Blue Gene P with 8792 processors. As a chess software, they were using Ripka Fort, which was still not available on the market. But before sharing with you this fascinating game, make sure that you are subscribed in order not to miss my future uploads. So this is game one and Topolov who had white pieces opened up with d4. Anand responded with knight f6, c4, g6, knight c3 and d5. Still Anand sticks to the Grunfeld defense which he employed regularly over the past year. c takes d5, we have the exchange variation, knight takes d5, e4. Knight takes c3, b takes c3, bishop g7, bishop c4, we have the good old classical variation, c5, and knight e2. With this move, white is strengthening the pawn on d4 from e2 square, and already a move like bishop g4 can be met with f3. Here Anand played knight c6, bishop e3, after which we have castling by both sides, and knight a5. Later, Anand would choose b6, but meanwhile, in the first game, we have knight a5, bishop d3, b6, queen d2, e5, and bishop h6. White is offering the exchange of dark squared bishops in order to weaken black's kingside, but is doing it in the cost of sacrificing a pawn. We have the exchange of dark squared bishops on g7, c takes d4, e takes d4, and rook a c1. A year earlier Topolov had chosen f4 in a game against Komsky, but this time he decided to proceed with rook a c1, thus somehow surprising his opponent. But Anand's response was immediate and he played queen d6. It turns out that this is a novelty. A year earlier bishop b7 was played by Carlsen, but in our game we have an interesting queen d6 move Black queen is taking under control the e5 square and now f4 can be met with f6, still keeping the eye on e5 square. And yes, in our game we're after f4 we have f6, f5 and queen e5. Interestingly, still both players were blitzing out their moves. This queen e5 was considered a risky decision by Anand's team at the time of the game. Well, another alternative is developing the light squared bishop, but in our game we will see that Anand would completely neglect the development of that piece. Here we have knight f4 and g5, a bit risky move, still bishop d7 was playable, here comes knight h5 check, king g8 and h4. So as this knight is on the rim, still black hasn't completed the queenside development and black's kingside is somewhat vulnerable, Topolov wants to organize an attack as soon as possible. h6, h takes g5, h takes g5, so by going for an exchange of pawns on g5, Topolov managed to open up the h file and here we go rook f3. Uh, I have to tell you that perhaps Anna's team reached this position during their preparations and actually Anna's team was intending a quick and safe draw in the first game. Probably they were hoping for a move like bishop c4 check, after which black can capture on c4 and then can finally develop the light squared bishop and then the queens will also be exchanged and this is going to end up in a draw. We have a drawish rook end game, but instead after h takes g5, Topolov chose rook f3. Topolov wants to make use of the weakness of the h-file and is bringing his rook on that attacking file. 
what is more important, top all of his steel in his preparations. King f7 by Anand, which already turns out to be a mistake. Well, bishop d7 is better, but instead in our game we have king f7 and as we have reached the critical position, please pause the video and try to find Topolov's next move. Ready? In here. To Anand's king f7, Topolov quickly responded with a staggering knight sacrifice on f6. It was revealed afterwards that Topolov had found the line during his opening preparation with the help of his powerful supercomputer. By the way, instead of playing king f7, if you play a move like bishop d7, then this knight takes f6 move is not dangerous. Black is managing to repel white's attack pretty successfully. Rook c8 neutralizing any possible penetration by white rook and black is holding. But instead in our game we have king f7 and there it goes, knight takes f6 is on the board. King takes f6 by Anand. Well, if a move like queen takes f6, then rook h3 will follow. Now, if rook hg8 trying to neutralize white rook, then after the exchange of rooks on h8, white rook is penetrating the 7th rank and it's over. Or after rook h3, if a move like bishop d7, then already it's too late. Once rook h7 check is coming, the game ends up very quickly. e5, another powerful move. Now you have to give up your queen, otherwise if a move like queen takes e5, then queen takes g5 will follow and black king is getting checkmated. Or after rook h7 check, if a move like king e8, then e5 will follow and again white is winning all the time, this e5 brings white a victory. Let's go back, but in our game after king f7, knight takes f6, we have king takes f6 by Anand and rook h3. Rook g8, well, if a move like queen f4, then e5 check clears the road to black's king. If king takes e5, then queen e2 check will follow, or uh, rook e1 check is also playable. If king d5, then rook f1, and black is suffering heavy losses. If queen e5, then queen f3 check, followed by queen takes a8. Again, this is going to be winning. Black king has no chance to survive. So in our game after rook h3 we have rook g8 and rook h6 check, king f7, rook h7 check, king e8 and the second rook is also penetrating the 7th rank. The way Topolov managed to activate his rooks is simply stunning. A remarkable position, right? All white needs is to switch into the attack of the queen as well and finish up black king. Here Anand played king d8. And this time we have another powerful move by Topolov, bishop b5. The threat is rook c e7. For example, if a move like a6, then rook e7 will follow. And where are you going to put your queen? Queen c5 can allow white to go for a staggering queen sacrifice. And then checkmate will follow. Or after bishop b5, if queen takes b5, then the d4 square is no longer protected and again black king is getting checkmated. So after bishop b5 we have queen takes e4 and after rook takes c8 check finally Anand resigned. In view of the following lines, if king takes c8 then queen c1 check is coming, you can't move your king, checkmate will follow, you should cover it with a knight but after bishop takes c6 and then the exchange of Queens, bishop takes a8, black has no chance to save this endgame, white is a piece up, that's why after this final exchange sacrifice we have a resignation. Well this is it dear chess lovers, this is modern chess where supercomputers are part of the game. In the end a chess puzzle for you where the task is to find the mating line for white, it's white to move and I will wait for your answer in the comment section. Thanks for watching, here are more suggestions for you, feel free to check them out as well. I will see you in my next video, take care.